Hello, everybody. Hello. So, as of recently, I did a college panel where like families from my city can come and ask questions about like what it was like to get into college, the admissions process as a whole, um, everything like that. So I honestly felt like it was worthy of making a video about the college admissions process is stressful regardless of how prepared you are going into it. Um, so, and my sister's about to start applying for colleges as well as like, all of our friends around that age. So I thought it would be fun to make a little video um, explaining how I got into the schools I applied to um, and a little bit about my admissions process specifically. So I actually only applied to five schools and I will show them on the side here. The way that schools in Texas work, high schools, is if you're in a certain percentage of your class, you get auto admission into state schools such as UT Austin or a and things like that. So I was in the top 6% of my class. I have a very large class. I was ranked 34th out of 728, uh, which is a little under 5%. Taking AP classes is definitely a way to like achieve a higher rank. Um, and get that weighted GPA moved up. My weighted GPA was a 104.5. At the end of my senior year, I left high school with a 105. Our school system is on the 100 scale instead of the 4.0 scale, but um, as long as you put that in your college admissions, the way it's given to you, they'll do all of the things to make sure you're set on an even playing field. So all that being said, I already had some safety schools in my pocket with being able to get into UT Austin automatically, essentially. So that kind of limited the amount of schools I was wanting to apply to. I knew I had a great school in my back pocket, and so I only wanted to apply to schools of that level or higher. At the University of Virginia, I'd say a good SAT score overall is gonna be a 1400. I personally scored a 1520 on the exam. I perfect scored the math section, and then I got a 7. 20 on the reading. I did study for that a lot. So I did, I highly recommend Khan Academy. They're like totally free um, SAT prep that you can do. Um, I do believe I ended up submitting my ACT score. My goal score was a 32 and I took the test once and got a 31. So I wasn't as happy with that one, but I did end up submitting that to UVA and UMich, but not to Yale and Cornell simply because like those Ivy League schools are gonna um, maybe look down on that a little bit, so I just submitted my SAT scores. I also did prep for ACT as well. I used Kaplan, which was pretty good. Um, Khan Academy didn't offer a ACT version, so I went with that, but um, I do definitely recommend doing prep of some kind. There's tons of practice tests, videos, things for you to be able to increase your chances of getting higher scores on the test because with those kinds of tests, you really need to prepare for them specifically. Even if you do know a lot about, you know, the math on the exam, they're asked in specific ways, they go over specific questions frequently, so it's good to have experience looking over past exams. So I am also an out-of-state student, which lowers the percentage of, of um, like acceptances. Um, so I did apply to all out-of-state schools other than um, UT. So I do think it is a little bit harder to get into those schools if you are not a in-state student. However, like anything's possible. I didn't start taking AP classes until my sophomore year where I took um, AP Euro. Um, so that was the first AP class I took. I definitely, if your school offers it, it's a great way to like, not only boost your GPA, boost your class rank, but also to kind of get used to the type of rigor that college courses require um, and hone in on a lot of writing skills. I think those English and history classes will teach you how to write an essay properly. So you don't need to worry about formatting once you get into college. I took one AP class my sophomore year. I took five my junior year and I believe two my senior year, let me think. Yes, so the ones I took junior year were AP US History, AP um, Lang, AP Calc BC, um, AP Physics 1, and AP Computer Science Principles. With AP classes, definitely if you have some colleges in mind that you're already looking at, 
AP scores can count differently for just across the board in the United States. So for instance, at the University of Virginia, where I'm attending right now, I needed pretty much a four or a five to get those credits transferred um, and to count in college versus at schools like closer by, like a and is just one that I'm familiar with, they'll take threes as well. So it really just depends on the school and the amount of credits you'll get, but it's good to know going into it, hey, this AP class, yes, it might boost my GPA, but will it get me, will it get me credit in college? Um, is definitely important because you wanna use your time wisely in high school um, before you go into college, I think. I definitely think my junior year was the hardest. I took the most APs that year. I also was working a job pretty consistently and I was in a varsity sport. So I was pretty jam packed and I decided to make my senior uh, course load a little bit lighter. So I only took, uh, I took AP Calc BC and um, AP Environmental Science. So I ended up walking into college with almost 30 credits that were transferable. Only, I believe eight of those were in my major specifically. Um, which is architecture. However, I essentially get out of all of the general elective requirements, meaning I can take whichever electives I'd like, and that allows me to focus on pursuing minors that I have interest in, as well as taking other classes and kind of broadening my interest on things rather than working to fulfill a requirement, which I think is totally worth it um, in, my, in my case. Extracurriculars on Common App, I definitely recommend. There's definitely like a certain way to write about them. I would list your extracurriculars and what you feel is most valuable to you and your development as a person. Um, that being said, I listed cross country and track at the top of my list because I participated in those the longest and they took up the most amount of time for me. Um, so I did both sports all four years of high school. I was a varsity athlete and then I was team captain junior and senior year, or one of the team captains. But um, I definitely had a large role on the team, I feel, and I wanted to showcase my leadership as well as like doing something over time, um, especially running every day of the year. In addition to that, I also participated in some volunteer organizations, um, National Charity League, it's a mother-daughter organization that you actually join going into seventh grade, so I had done that for six years, um, as well as NHS and NJHS, which is National Honor Society. Um, definitely list those if you have them, um, but National Honor Society is pretty common for um, kids in UV. Like I mentioned earlier, I did have work experience, so I worked from the age of 16 all the way to the end of my end of summer my senior year um, at the same place actually so again that shows some longevity there um, I worked in like customer service and um, at a local gym facility so it helped me learn how to talk to adults pick up the phone call people I think having a job is very important um, just building character and um, developing yourself as like an independent person. So I definitely recommend a job, job experience as well. Those extracurriculars are options for you to put activities and hobbies that you're committed to. If you play an instrument, if um, let's say you play an instrument but you're not in the band, that's still something worth writing about. I have this YouTube channel, I actually put that on my <laughs> extracurriculars just for fun, like it's something I contribute time to, it's something that I have proof of that I've been doing for a long time and I, I think it's pretty cool and I have fun doing it. So, you know, you want to showcase all parts of yourself, not just like the sheer stats of SAT, ACT, volunteer hours, things like that. When you're writing the descriptions, use numbers. How many hours did you work on average? How many years were you there? How many days a week did you work out with this club or this team? They want to see those actual numbers. So saying that I had a streak of running every day for four years is a lot better than writing I like I consistently ran over four years. I had an actual number written down. I ran this many days in a row. Um, I think adding those numerical values, it makes it a little bit more specific and a lot of times more impressive um, when, you're, when you're more specific with how you describe them. Because you only have a couple words to do so, so you wanna make sure those are valuable and they can kind of, an outsider can look at it and understand the amount of time and energy you put into those activities as well. As for like the award section, um, I put the, we have a Distinguished Scholar Award at my high school. It's three years of a language and then 100 community service hours. 
I put that and I put the like AP Scholar Award, which is a national if you do a bunch of AP exams and do relatively well in them. Um, those I'd say aren't necessarily as, as important to your um, application, but definitely include that if you have those. Um, National Merit Scholars for SAT, ACT are very good. Those can help you get scholarships. Definitely don't like overlook them, but just know it's not going to be the end all be all if you do or don't have those. Essays, essays on the college. So the essays, you're obviously gonna have your main personal essay that you write um, as part of Common App. That's going to be your lengthier essay. You're gonna submit that to all your colleges. So that's the one you need to be spending the most amount of time on. That's the one you wanna try and make unique, uh, specific to you, have personal meaning. Um, I personally wrote about my grandfather's impact on my life, how he contributed to my perception of how to live my life, as well as my interest in architecture, um, which is the major I was applying to. For each school, there are going to be specific essays depending on the college that you're applying to. Um, and there's also supplemental essays where a lot of times you can pick which essay you'd like to do. Um, so I had a couple options at the University of Virginia, so I'll just use those examples. So since I'm a, I was applying into the School of Architecture, they had an essay question specifically asking what's, what started my interest in architecture. Um, and for those, definitely be specific. Like if you visited the school, throw in a detail from there. Um, something from your childhood, like any, it could be anything, just try and make it to the point. You only have a couple words to do it, I think I had like 250, and you want to stay, honestly, don't try to max out the word count, like get, like say what you need to say in a concise way. So, um, that was like the architecture specific one, and then they had a list of, on Virginia, of a bunch of other supplemental questions. One of the popular ones they keep repeating is, there's a bridge called Veda Bridge, which they essentially will paint a slogan or words or something like that. I know they did the Gettysburg Address on there one year. Um, so it asked, hey, if you could decide what to paint on this bridge, um, what would you paint and why? Um, so with that, I had a little quote that I had on my lock screen of my phone for years. Um, and so I used that and I explained why, but it doesn't have to be a monumental big thing in your life all the time. Sometimes it's those tiny details that are gonna make you stand out. And then the last one was an, one that said like, take us to your happy place in 50 words or less. So at the time I was like really into like writing poetry, doing more like graphic design. So I actually made that one a poem. I thought it turned out pretty well. It was something I had actually already written um, that I went back and revised a little bit to work with the prompt. So you already a lot of the time have these ideas that you can work with, um, have these experiences. It's just a matter of picking them out to showcase yourself the best to these universities. I do think that writing is going to be stressed more and more, so I would try to spend as much time on that as possible. Um, even before they send out the prompts for Common App, they don't really change the main essay that much so coming up with some ideas as they happen throughout your life and writing them on a notes app or writing them down that'll help you out a lot in the long run definitely have some more like tips and stuff if you're looking to apply for architecture or design um major if that's something you're interested in listening to or watching let me know um because design I didn't really know what to expect, and then when I'm looking at the applications, I'm like, oh shoot, maybe I should have prepared a little bit more for this. Um, but I hope this was somewhat helpful. UVA, I love it there. Um, the school's amazing, and the friends I've met there are really awesome. So I do think it's worth applying to if you have any interest in, in uh, more of an East Coast school. Um, it's a great public university for a ton of majors. Um, that being said, I hope this helps with any application that you might have. For my sister, hopefully this is helpful when you're going through the process. Obviously, I'm a phone call or a text away if you have any questions, but um, this should be just try and make it more fun than it is stressful. I didn't do that, but okay.